This lecture introduces the survey set statement, a single line of code at the start of your Stata data analysis do file, which specifies the survey design of your data set. All subsequent analyses, in particular descriptive and bivariate statistics, must account for the survey design to produce unbiased mean and accurate variance estimates. This lecture draws directly from online materials developed by the Carolina Population Center at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and it has been produced with their permission. First, let us review design characteristics of complex surveys and then discuss how to specify the survey design with the survey set statement in Stata. A truly random selection of households would involve listing all of the households in the country and randomly selecting the desired number of households from that list. Using this approach, each household would have an independent and equal chance of being included in the survey. While this approach is statistically ideal, the cost of first enumerating all households and then visiting the selected households that would be scattered all over the country make this approach impractical. A more practical approach is cluster sampling. For example, in the demographic and health surveys, enumeration areas from the census or similar national surveys are first selected randomly from a list of all such areas in the country or within strata if stratification is being used. These areas are often referred to as clusters or primary sampling units, PSUs. They may be towns or villages or they may be census tracts and cities. Generally, each cluster contains roughly the same number of households. The next step is to enumerate, count and label, all of the households in the cluster. Then a random selection process is used to select the households within each cluster. This is the sample of households that will be visited in the survey. While sample clustering is much more practical, it also means that the households are not statistically independent. Instead, the characteristics of a given household and its household members are more like those of other households in that cluster and are less like households in other clusters. This effect of a non-independent sampling process called the sample survey design effect shows up in the standard error of estimation statistics, means, and regression coefficients. Clustering tends to incorrectly decrease the size of standard errors, leading to a greater chance of finding statistical differences that are not real. By correcting for the effect of clustering, the design effect, we account for the fact that people in the sample are similar in some way because they are from the same communities. Each observation in the sample is chosen using a method of random selection. An important property of this method is that the probability of selection may not be equal for all members of the population. The sampling weight for each observation is computed as the inverse of the selection probability. Additional adjustments, such as non-response, may be made to the sampling weights. An observation with a sampling weight of 1,000 represents 1,000 individuals from the target population, while another observation with a sample weight of 50 represents only 50 individuals. This is why the DHS normalizes the sampling weight around 1. On average, each person in the sample represents one person in the real world. The population can be divided into sections, strata, that are internally more homogeneous or similar. This may be done in order to oversample smaller groups in a target population. Examples of strata are region of country, urban rural residence, or education level. A separate sample is selected from each stratum. Like oversampling, stratification can bias the mean estimate, and it is therefore incorporated into sampling weights. And like clustering, the observations within strata are not statistically independent, so stratification can affect variance estimates. As a result, stratification is adjusted for in two ways, as part of the sampling weights and as a separate adjustment on the variances. Researchers may not adjust for the effect of stratification on variance in two circumstances. One, when conducting subpopulation analyses because there may be too few observations per strata to produce variance estimates or two, when performing multi-survey analyses where the units of stratification differed across surveys. When we do not specify strata in our survey design, confidence intervals might be widened very slightly, resulting in slightly more conservative estimates and conclusions, which is fine. One of the most common mistakes made when analyzing data from sample surveys is specifying an incorrect type of weight for the sampling weights. 
only one of the four weight keywords provided by Stata, P weight, is correct to use for sampling weights. Probability weights are another name for sampling weights. The P weight command causes Stata to use the sampling weight as the number of subjects in the population that each observation represents when computing estimates such as proportions, means, and regression parameters. A robust variance estimation technique will automatically be used to adjust for the design characteristics so that the variances, standard errors, and confidence intervals are correct. In the demographic and health surveys, the p-weight variable is stored with no decimal points, so you must divide the relevant weight variable by 1 million. The weight variables include the women and children's weight, V005, male weight, MV005, household weight, HV005, and the domestic violence module weight, D005. The F weight, frequency weight, A weight, analytic weight, and I weight, importance weight, are incorrect and should not be used for survey data analysis. Visit the UNC Carolina Population Center website for a concise explanation of why these other weights should not be used. Before any of the survey estimation commands can be used, the survey set command should be used to specify the variables that describe the stratification, sampling weight, and primary sampling unit variables. The survey set statement follows this syntax. Survey set, square bracket around the p weight, where p weight equals the probability weight variable, comma, PSU option with the PSU variable in parentheses, and if desired, strata option with the strata variable in parentheses. Alternatively, the syntax can be written survey set statement PSU variable square bracket around P weight equals comma and then the strata option. Here is an example that uses the survey set statement from the 2010 Rwanda Demographic and Health Survey. First, we introduce six decimal values to the sampling weight variable V005 by generating a new variable called weight equal to V005 divided by 1 million. Then we specify the survey design in a survey set statement, where the probability weight is equal to the variable weight, the primary sampling unit is equal to V021, and the strata is equal to V023. You can use these same variables to specify the study design in other DHS datasets. Find the equivalent variables if you are working with a different population survey dataset. Finally, after we have specified the survey design, we tell Stata to account for the survey design in any subsequent analyses by inserting SVY colon before the rest of the command. For example, to estimate the percent of children whose families cook with charcoal not accounting for the survey design, we would write tabulate charcoal. And to perform the same analysis accounting for survey design, we would write SVY colon tabulate charcoal. When using the SVY commands to analyze only a portion of the sample, a subpopulation, it is important to analyze the entire data set and to use the subpopulation option to identify those observations you want to include in the estimate. This is because Stata needs to have information from every observation in the sample to compute the variance, standard error, and confidence intervals, even though only the observations in the subsample are needed to compute means, proportions, and regression coefficients. To use the subpop option, we need to generate a variable that has the value of 1 for the observations in the subpopulation and a value of 0 for those who should be excluded. Here is an example where we create a variable called Kigali for those people living in one of the three districts that comprise the capital city of Rwanda, Kigali, where 1 equals Kigali and 0 equals not Kigali. To estimate the percent of children whose families cook with charcoal in Kigali only, we write SVY comma subpop parentheses Kigali colon tabulate charcoal. Check out the Carolina Population Center website for additional Stata analysis learning materials and go to populationsurveyanalysis.com for a PDF version of this video and other learning materials that support your analysis of a population survey dataset.